Welcome to the Positive Productivity Podcast, episode 314. The Positive Productivity Podcast was created to empower entrepreneurs to achieve and appreciate personal and professional success. I'm your host, Kim Sutton, and if you're ready, let's jump into today's episode. Welcome back to another episode of Positive Productivity. This is your host, Kim Sutton, and I'm so happy that you are here to join us today. I'm also thrilled to introduce our guest, Karen Bate. Karen is the co-founder and co-conspirator, I love that, Karen, at Awesome Women Entrepreneurs. Welcome, Karen. I'm so happy to have you. Thank you, Kim. I really appreciate you inviting me on your show. Oh, you're so welcome. I would love if you would give a backstory to the listeners, how you got to be where you are today and what the journey looked like up till then. Well, I will. I would love to do that. So um, the uh, Awesome Women Entrepreneurs Awe is my latest endeavor, and I've been working on that for the last several years, mostly on a volunteer passion project basis. But I come from a long line of entrepreneurs. My parents were both entrepreneurs. I have four brothers, and they are all entrepreneurs. So it was inevitable that when I, I got out of college and I started working as a journalist, and from there I moved to D.C., where I live in the D.C. area, and I was a press secretary on Capitol Hill. Um, I didn't really love Capitol Hill. It wasn't for me. Um, and so I only stayed there a short time. And then I went into nonprofit public relations. And I worked in nonprofit PR for several different um, national organizations for many years. And eventually, I chose to stay home with my kids and work part time doing different things like editing and uh, journalism, covering, uh, working for the local news, things like that. And then I got back into nonprofit PR when my youngest was about six or seven, and I worked for an affordable housing organization for nine years. And then I decided to hang out my own shingle and start my own PR firm. So I started KB Concepts PR in 2007 and provide marketing, PR, and social media services for small businesses and nonprofits. And from there, I met so many other amazing women business owners that were doing their own thing and came up with a great idea and started their own businesses. And for a couple of years, I started saying, you know, there should be a group for women like this. We know all these awesome women who all are doing their own businesses. And there should be, we should all get together and support one another and collaborate and partner and hire each other and refer each other. And finally, a friend and colleague of mine said, who also ran her own business, said, you know, you've been talking about this for the last two years. Why don't you just have a meeting and do it? So I did. I had a meeting at my home. I invited about a dozen people to come. 25 women showed up. I had women knock on my door saying, I don't even know you, but somebody told me I should be here. And that's how awe began. And we grew by leaps and bounds. The women all said, this is the greatest idea. I just love being with other women who are in my situation. Oh, I love that. And you said you invited a dozen and 25 showed up. Yes, it was. I was shocked. And from there, within a few months, we had 50 dues paying members of Awesome Women Entrepreneurs, the Arlington, Virginia chapter. Today, we have 150 women members. Um, They all own their own businesses. And we recently started chapters last fall in Fairfax, Virginia, Tyson's Vienna, Virginia, Washington, D.C., Bethesda, Maryland. And we just start, we're starting a chapter next month in Prince George's County, Maryland. And we talked to someone today who's starting a chapter in L.A. And we have another woman starting a chapter in Vero Beach, Florida, and another one in Whitefish, Montana. Oh, wow. Look at you grow. I know it's, these women have just contacted us. They, it's just something, women just love to be, it's not like such a unique idea. There are groups like this everywhere. And I think the reason they're so popular is because it's kind of like on a wave along with, you know, the Me Too movement and so many other things. I think women have just decided that nobody is going to do it for them. And when we all get together and support one another, that's how all our boats are going to ride. And also this kind of false narrative that women don't support each other and that they compete with one another and undermine one another. We just don't find that to be true. We always say there's more than enough pie for everybody. 
And in fact, we just build a bigger pie. And even if you're in the same business as me in my group or um, in, a, in a different group, I'm going to throw business your way. I'm going to go and ask you if you'll collaborate with me on a bigger project I'd like to go after. It, you can't lose when you get together and support other women. Oh, you're absolutely right. I mean, I look around and I don't say this with a big head, but I don't consider myself to have one competitor. Yes, there are people who do the same stuff as me. I'm an Infusionsoft certified partner when I'm not doing the podcast and building the positive productivity brand. And there are thousands of Infusionsoft certified partners worldwide, but I don't consider any of them competition. I mean, we have Facebook groups for the certified partners where we're constantly collaborating with each other and helping each other grow. And I also have... I've never shared this on the podcast before. Listeners, I'll put this, I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But I also, I, I started my business, Karen, as a virtual assistant. I was a interior architect for 10 years and lost my job. And, you know, you, you do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. But I was doing what I had to do. Absolutely. And life is full of change. Oh my gosh, life is full of change. Listeners, if this is your first episode, go listen to some of the earliest ones because you will hear about a lot of craziness in the life of me and my husband and yeah, and our Thora of children and animals. That's the best way to put it. I started my business as a virtual assistant and about a year or two later, I decided to start a Facebook group called Virtual Assistant Job. And today, like as of the date of this recording, it's going to cross 13,000 members. Wow. Yeah. And we're not competing. I I don't consider myself a virtual assistant anymore, but I'm the organizer of the group and I'm trying to help people grow and I'm starting a mastermind for VAs. And I've told them. And you, and all of this is because you, you know, you get what you give and you're giving and it, look at how you and I met. Didn't we meet in She Podcasts or did I email it? In She Podcasts, which is another incredible group because we're all supporting each other. And what I love about the Facebook groups is that they're different than trying to connect with people on Facebook's regular pages, which are, you know, you're fighting their algorithms. But in the Facebook groups, it's genuine, like-minded people. And all of us in that group, I just joined it recently, and you are one of the first people I met. And I could not be more thrilled that I'm going to, that I'm now on your show, you're going to be on my show, and we're, we're supporting each other. It's, it's so great. Oh, absolutely. I completely agree. And I just, I love to put out and yes, especially women, but regardless, I love to share the word of good people and the messages of good people, men or women. Well, and there's such a value in that. What you're doing is providing value to people by doing that. And that, and then that those people are then drawn to you in other ways. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's such a great, it's such a great approach, I think. Thank you. And same right back to you. Now, I am a little bit curious about awe. I am curious what is different in awe besides the fact that it's completely women. And please know, I don't, I'm not confrontational course, at all. Of course. No, except for with an ex-husband sometimes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, there's organizations like BNI and others out there that are about networking. But it's all about bringing, you know, there's an expectation that you're going to be contributing referrals. Right. On a regular basis. I'm not a member, never have been a member. I honestly don't like the practice because I want to give referrals to people who I know, like, and trust, right? I all do respect to, to BNI and they're incredibly successful. And I think the founders wouldn't mind at all if I have a different opinion because they have done an amazing thing and been so successful. But I've gone as a guest several times. I have many friends in BNI. And to me, it's just so much pressure, A, to go to a meeting every single week while you're trying to run your own business. And also it's kind of expensive and the pressure to refer and prove that you've like said, sent referrals and, you know, then you have to follow up. And ever, after every meeting, all these people would follow up with me and want to have coffee with me. And honestly, I just didn't have time. It was, it was really, um, I just thought it was kind of a lot on top of already being a busy entrepreneur. Absolutely. So let me tell you a little bit about why I think awe is different. Please. We, I, I, I'm a very involved member of the local chamber of commerce. I love it. I'm an active, active member. I chair some of the committees. I volunteer. I sponsor their events. It's, you know, of course, co, co-ed, um, uh, networking. It's wonderful. And I am a big believer in supporting your community and your local business community. But what awe provides is something completely different. Many of the awe members are also members of the chamber. But what we provide 
is a small, local, really low-key monthly gathering of like-minded women entrepreneurs where we can get together and share the real story, the truth, and the authentic side of the juggle and the struggle of running your own business. So when I go to the Chamber of Commerce, I dress up in my professional outfit. I march in there and I, of course, um, I'm fully confident of my abilities and we sh- we talk and laugh and it's very social. But it, in awe, the women can actually talk about, which I'm sure you could relate to, in awe, a woman can stand up and say, I actually ta- talked to a client on the phone for half an hour today with a sick baby throwing up over my shoulder. Oh my and, God, I can relate to that. <laughs> right? And in what other environments are women allowed to be that honest about what their lives are like? It's almost non-existent in the corporate world, for one thing. Mm-hmm. And so we say that we provide intimate social gatherings where women can, and we always have a good speaker, but only for 15 or 20 minutes because we love getting the great content. But really what the women want the most is just to be able to relax, chat, connect, laugh, you know, form new friendships and the referrals and partnerships and hiring one another is It's done at a feverish rate, but if you ask our women, what they love about it is the social aspects, the relationship aspects. And they will all then report in a survey that their business has gone up by 30%. So we love that about it. But it's it's so much for them about being able to walk in at the end of the day, grab a glass of wine, have a snack. You don't have to think. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to prove that you made referrals. There's no pressure at all. They have enough pressure already in their lives. So this is a place where they come for relief from that kind of pressure. And as a great bonus, they do all end up hiring each other, referring each other, partnering. And, you know, as my partner, Evelyn says, it's not a mindless business exchange, business card exchange, or a stuffy networking event. It's fun. We have a lot of fun. Oh, I love that. Yeah, because I don't feel like I can go to the chamber or go to a BNI meeting and joke about the fact that I got on a Facebook Live this morning, lifted my arm to make a point, and realized that there was a big hole in my sweater. <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. That's exactly the kind of thing that we would all share. We have a, we, at the end of each meeting, we get together and we do it at the very end, not at the beginning. We share who we are, what our businesses are, and like a little something about everyone gets one minute. It's a one minute elevator speech. And we, people share things like that. We have one member who's a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. That's what she does. It's the other thing about awe is it's not um, it's not six figure females or elevate or one of these very high end networking groups. It's not hive. It's not trying to be that. We allow women if they're just doing a side hustle or thinking about becoming an entrepreneur. The dues is very reasonable, and it, it, it we want to re- we just want to support women. And we feel like that's something that we can do and it makes our lives richer and it makes everyone else happy too. It's just, it just brings us so much joy. Karen, did you find as you were growing your business and being a mom that you had to stand up or justify the fact that you were working just as hard and just as capable as any man? And please know listeners, I am not, I, I might get some backlash on this, but I don't consider myself a feminist. I know that I can do anything that anybody else can do. Maybe just biologically, not some things that men can do. Let's just leave it at that. But I, I feel sometimes like I have to prove myself. You know, that's such an interesting question because I do, I think that that is true. I, there were uh, one time a very, very good male friend of mine who has been a great business supporter. He's hosted events for us. He, t- he buys a table for us at the Chamber of Commerce annual meeting. You know, he loves awe. But one time when I had first launched my own business and was, you know, really making a go of it, He said to me about three years later, you know, I'm so impressed with you. I really thought you were kind of flaky and, and, and like, I didn't really think about you as a successful business person when I first met you. And I thought, well, that's funny. I was a successful business person. Like, where does that come from? But I I do think you might have hit on something that, that, um, you know, I can network all day with the men at the Chamber of Commerce. And again, I'm not bashing men either. But they're still 99% of the time giving their business 
to the men that they play golf with, that they've known for a long time, that they've always done business with. And I do think that there's an extra barrier for women. And that's why when we support each other and when women are funding other women and giving them more investment income, which is another area that really needs to grow, we're all going to benefit from that. Absolutely. And that's something that's never really been discussed. I mean, I would be curious to know if you've faced any backlash about the fact that it's a women's only group, but I've never seen any backlash or maybe I'm just overlooking it because I tend to overlook and just ignore negativity in general. But you, I don't hear or see the negativity about, you know, the men's clubs. And I'm not talking about X-rated men's clubs, but, you know, the men's business clubs. I don't hear the negative about it. I think men would say, oh, well, all the men's clubs have had to integrate and include women. Well, that may be true in the terms of the rules, but the reality is that the CEO suite is still a very much a men's club. The U.S. Senate, (laughs) despite the fact that there are some women senators, if you look at the numbers, you know, it's still a men's club and it women are still fighting to have a voice at the highest levels of every area of business. And I think that one way, and a lot of women have left the corporate world and become entrepreneurs for that reason. I'm, I'm certain of it. And is, if we're doing, if we're supporting each other as a way to catch up and level the playing field, then I don't see why anyone should have a problem with it. It's only fair, right? Oh, absolutely. And I've had a couple of, well, I've had all my guests are amazing. You included. Don't get me wrong when I say this. In a previous episode, and I'll link to it in the show notes, uh, I spoke with Melanie DeRose. She was an attorney for years and years, and she wanted to build a business that would help women get more uh, n- nutrition. And now it's it's going nationwide, and it's specifically focusing on a woman's product. And just her story just blew me away because... Well, first off, being able to create any food product is somewhat outside of my comprehension. I mean, I can barely cook mac and cheese out of a box. <laughs> oh, no, that's so funny. Yeah, that's, that's probably <laughs> one of my daily battles is what am I going to cook the kids that isn't going to turn out burnt? And it's not that I can't cook people. It's I love my business so much that I make the mistake of taking my laptop out to the kitchen counter oh. and I get distracted on whatever I'm working. And in the meantime, dinner gets burnt. Well, let me offer you a tiny tip. One of my main clients in my PR business is a um, outdoor fitness and nutritionist business. And she also does all these great health challenges and everything. And she has, you know, pretty much brainwashed all of us over the many years that we've been with her about healthy eating, eating whole foods, cooking simple, healthy whole foods. And her recipes are so simple. And it, I kind of took it as a challenge to cook and eat healthfully. And uh, several years ago, and I find it now it's kind of become for me a very creative outlet. So because I work out of a home office and my husband works for the U.S. government and doesn't get home till quite late, I enjoy that couple of hours before he walks in the door. I just start. I'm, I'll be at my computer, which is my office is right next to the kitchen. And I kind of think, hmm. What do I feel like eating tonight? Oh, what have I got? What could I make that's so creative? And I Google a couple of recipes and I really find it relaxing. Now, granted, you have five children, so you're in a completely different place. But maybe if you looked at it as a creativity thing, it would be a little bit easier. Yeah, definitely. I know that that would help a lot. And actually, I was using food.com for the longest time. I love that site, but they just recently re- remodeled their site. Food.com, change it back, please. I like your previous site better. Uh, I'll send you bodybyjenny.com's food blog. It's awesome. The food oh, is absolutely delicious and beautiful. We call it edible art. Everything looks beautiful too. Oh, amazing. I'll have to take pictures too. Like chronicle my food journey. My husband will love it because on the days that he is home, he he's not working U.S. government. He's working retail. So he often gets home late as well. And mm-hmm. But the days that he is home, he knows he cooks because that's how he gets something edible. Right, right. Yeah, Yeah, and my husband cooked last night because I had an awe meeting. (laughs) Uh, So some of the women in our group, like you mentioned, the amazing people you've met through doing your podcast, we have so many. Every time I interview one of our members, I'm more blown away. These women, there's so many women around this country, as you've probably seen too, that have the most amazing stories of challenges they've overcome and 
barriers they've knocked down to be able to be successful in their businesses. And they're, it's so inspiring. I have a member who was sent here from Pakistan in an arranged marriage, Kim, at the age of 20. Wow. And she married the man, had two children when they, he was awful, you know, just awful. Like she was treated very traditionally and he, which she was not happy the whole time. And once her youngest went to college, she divorced him and moved to this area. She had put herself through school, become a physical therapist. She worked at a medical center here as a physical therapist. And she noticed that this that the way they were treating broken show arms and arm injuries and shoulder industry injuries with slings was, you know, they hadn't improved that technology in a hundred years. She has invented an arm brace. It's FDA approved, patented, made in America, women minority owned business. She's selling it to sports teams, the Pentagon. I mean, I keep telling her, you're going to be the next Spanx lady because it's so brilliant. And, and look at what she overcame to do that. It just blows me away. That's mind blowing. And yeah, you brought up a good example there too. Spanx. Holy moly. Yes. Oh yeah. And she got turned down and had the door shut in her face many, many times. I love her story. Yeah, me too. Definitely an inspiration. So another woman who's a member, um, she and her family own a chain of restaurants in the D.C. area. There are 10 of them now. It's called Lebanese Taverna. Her name's Grace Shea. And she and her family escaped from Lebanon during the Civil War in the late 1970s. The parents brought their five children. Now, you have five children, so picture this. They had to escape in the dead of night on a cargo ship to get away. And they came to the U.S. with like $20 in their pocket. The father knew someone who lived here in Arlington, Virginia. They moved in with them, a family of seven. The dad got a job as, I think, a dishwasher or a busser at the local restaurant, which was called the Greek Taverna. He worked his tail off, saved every penny. They continued to live with that family for a couple of years Eventually, the guy who owned the Greek Taverna said, I'm, I'm going to sell out um, if you're interested because he was such an amazing worker. And of course, he moved up very quickly because he was a very capable, well-educated person back in Lebanon. He bought the place from the owner and they were so broke that they didn't have enough money to b- build a completely new sign. So they just painted over the word Greek and named it the Lebanese Taverna. And Grace, that's now a multi, multi-million dollar family business. And she said to me, there is no word taverna in Greek. That's not a, I mean, in, in Lebanon, that's a Greek word. <laughs> and their business is called the Lebanese Taverna Group. And they've, they're like thriving. And she grew up under the tables at the restaurant while her brothers worked in the kitchen and her mom and dad worked. And like I said, they now own 10 businesses and are one of the pillars of the community. She sits on multiple nonprofit boards. They donate millions of dollars to St. Jude's Medical Center, They're just an incredible success story. That is so inspiring. Oh, and plus she, as a, as a girl from, from a Lebanese family, she said, we don't go away to college in, in our culture. She lived at home, worked at the restaurant and paid her way through the local public university too. Wow. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah. Even though her family were hugely successful at that point. That's so funny though, that they, they just painted over the sign. (laughs) Yes, I know. I love that part of the story. <laughs> I know, I, and I can't imagine trying to get my five children out in the dead of night quietly. Oh, they're all running all of the restaurants. One, the, she has a sister who's in charge of marketing. Her brother's the president. She's the vice president. One of them runs, um, you know, all of the the branches up in the D.C. Maryland area. It's it's an incredible. They have a market now, huge catering business. They do weddings and all that kind of stuff. It's it's a wonderful story. So you have various chapters about to be nationwide. Do you do anything to connect them all to each other? Well, yes. Our main website, awesomewomen.org, is the parent site, and all the chapter sites are listed under there. And each of the chapters has their own website with their own blog, and each of the chapter leaders updates their meetings and happenings, their calendar. But we all share the information as part of the main site And we also share um, on social media. So we have public social media pages that we all post on so that all of our chapters are being featured and so that women all over the country can see 
where chapters are forming in their community. And then we all, each chapter also has a fri- private Facebook page where the members can communicate privately with one another too and ask questions, share information, um, you know, promote their special sales and happenings in their particular chapter. Oh, I love it. Yeah, because I could see a way that even if somebody needs something that isn't available with a member in their local chapter, right? that being able to connect to somebody in the whole organization would be so beneficial. You're so right about that. And we just had a meeting yesterday with a new website developer because we want to, we, as we grow, we, we've realized we have to expand our website platform in a way that can really handle many, many, many chapters. And we're, we're thinking about what does that mean? So it would be so great if a woman, say, in D.C. was going to do business in L.A. Mm-hmm. and she'd want to tap into that chapter, maybe go to a meeting or get connected with women in her industry, maybe partner if she's got business and clients out there. And we feel like there's so many ways that we can have a lot of cross pollinating once we, um, you know, once we really get those the technological end of that squared away. Oh, absolutely. I love it. What have been some of the challenges that you faced while you've been growing on and how have you overcome them? So I just mentioned the number one challenge is technology. We, When we realized after Arlington's chapter of Awe grew so quickly and we had women asking us to start chapters in other communities, we, my partner Evelyn and I looked at each other and said, okay, we need help with this because we each run small businesses of our own, but this is, we're talking something much bigger here. So we met with um, a partnership coach, first of all, to make sure that we had a healthy partnership that would be able to, um, you know, that would deal with all of the things that come up when you're partners, because we had both been solopreneurs up to that point for, you know, many, many years. And then we met with a guy who, who specializes in scaling businesses. And he coached us and helped us think about all of the things you have to do to grow. And I would say the most challenging thing has been the technological end, creating a website platform that will accommodate multiple chapters, multiple um, uh, membership directories, uh, the ability to join and pay in specific chapters, the ability to sign up for events and manage those events and keep a list of all of the members and put up their profiles and share those behind the scenes with each chapter. All of this stuff has been a huge learning curve for us, but also amazing because we've learned so, so much through this process. Yeah, I can imagine that technology would be a challenge. When I started my business, I didn't know a thing about email marketing, about websites. Well, I guess the website part is a lie. I I actually, Karen, started my first business in 2005. So websites Mm -hmm. were completely different back then. Right. I mean, I I didn't know what WordPress was really until 2010, 2012. Yeah. So it was hard coded and I had to hire, you know, people to do that. And I basically broke my site anytime I went in to do an update on my own. So I I totally get that. Yeah. We've run into some technical snafus the last several months as we launched our new chapters, which we kind of expected, but you know, when you're trying to build an organization where each running our own other businesses, time becomes a factor. So we've, of course, hired people to help us. But, you know, that also pr- requires capital. And so our second challenge is, of course, finding the, you know, m- finding out how, the best way to um, have a steady stream of revenue coming in as we grow. And that we've, I think we've kind of figured that out. We've, we are determined to keep the cost low for membership. We have a wonderful, um, accountability group program similar to probably your mastermind process where small groups of women get together with a facilitator and set goals and take their businesses to the next level. And that's been super popular, um, in our Arlington chapter. And we're now offering that to our new chapters. So, you know, we're really at the beginning stages of this in terms of it being a business. And we'll, we just have to, we're excited to see where it goes. Oh, that's so exciting. What are the tools that help you in your business each and every day? Oh boy. Um, well, for po- for our podcasting, we um, uh, actually hired, we, we knew that we did not have the bandwidth because we do a local radio program on a public radio show. And then we repurpose those as podcasts. And since we were also building the new chapters and the website and dealing with awe, 
we just knew we didn't have the bandwidth for that. So we hired an expert. Her name is Jillian Pensavale. She lives in New York City. She has her own podcast called The Hamilcast, which is a very successful podcast about the play Hamilton. And she now has a new podcast of, about mystery series, I think. She's just a very fun, interesting person. She's an actress, an entrepreneur, and she manages our podcast and has really taught us a lot about the importance of technology. Like, I love how you made sure I had a microphone for this interview. And you're, the way you have this set up here on Zencaster is really interesting. I had never seen this before. So we use Libsyn and then we share it elsewhere. Um, she edits them all for us. But we do understand the crucial importance of equipment for that aspect so that you're, you know, the, the podcast and the radio shows are good quality. I already mentioned the website. It's so important that we have smooth, that our chapters are able to do everything smoothly. As our coach told us, you need to be able to create an awe in a box that has everything someone needs to start a chapter and grow a chapter in any city or town around the US. And that's what we're working so hard on. And then we, of course, use Canva for our social media. We use Canva. We love um, all of the scheduling apps, Buffer and Hootsuite, the Calendly for scheduling our, our um, uh, schedules. Um, we use Zoom calls for all of our meetings with all of our chapter leaders. I'm trying to think what else. We have so many. We, we pay a lot of subscriptions. <laughs> With Dropbox. We couldn't live without Dropbox where we share all of our channels. Oh, no, me neither. Yeah. You know. And I use Canva too. I love it. And if by chance she edits this episode, I have a great VA, Lang, who is in Canva creating the graphics and she does the editing and it's just amazing. That's the one thing that I took way too much time to figure out was that it didn't need to be a one woman show. Right. And having participated in several of our accountability groups, I'll, I'm going to say what I think are the two biggest challenges for women growing a business who are not yet at the, say, $100,000 mark. That seems to be like a real tipping point. And when women are getting close to that or are there, they, you simply can't grow any more without adding staff support. And you also have to make s products and packages of your services that can be bring in more passive income and that you can um, provide to a larger group of people instead of just one-on-one -on -one all the time. Because we all only have so many hours in a week and we can't spend it all in the weeds. So we always find that those are the two biggest struggles is making the leap to hiring and delegating and then creating packages of your products and services so that you can sell more but do less work. Oh my gosh. I wish I had heard that three years ago. <laughs> it's really just been the last year and a half to two years that I've been very focused on making passive products. I mean, they still take a little bit of work. Well, they take more than a little bit of work to create up front. The ones that I am offering take a little bit of work to deliver. Listeners, if you're curious, I have actually created Infusionsoft campaigns that somebody can purchase. They're already created. It just takes a minute for my team to drop them into somebody's account, but they're they're already made. But it's been amazing because I can still help people, which is what my focus is, is empowering entrepreneurs to grow without getting overwhelmed. But I don't need to be spending 10 to 20 hours the Infusionsoft accounts to do it anymore because it's already created. And I couldn't believe that it took me, wait, when did I get certified? Four years ago? It took me three and a half years to think of that idea. And I started kicking myself in the butt afterwards. Yeah. And this is why I always tell women, if you can join a mastermind group or an accountability group where you are brainstorming with other women, that's where those kind of solutions, because we all struggle with many of the same things. Mm -hmm. And if you get together with women who are in the same boat, dealing with the same issues, it's such a great way to give you those ideas instead of having to figure it all out for yourself. No one should be doing this alone. That's what the, the top of our website says. Running a business is hard work and you don't have to do it alone. And nor should you. Right. Absolutely. Amen to that. I love it. Yeah. Now I am curious just because I'm actually curious for me, but if somebody were interested in starting a chapter in their local area, what would be the requirements for them? I'm so glad you asked that. So I, um, we have a page on our website called Start a Chapter, and we have everything you need in our trusty Dropbox folders. 
Um, we have a chapter leader's guide. We set up your, your uh, sub website. We provide you with all the tools and instructions you need. We hold Zoom calls regularly so that we can walk you through everything and have you think through everything. We love to come to the first meeting of every new chapter and talk to people and explain to them why we do what we do and what, what why we think it's a wonderful thing. So if you or someone you know started a chapter, we'd love to come out and be at your first meeting. Um, so we provide everything you need. It really is a super smooth and easy setup and there's not much to it. You you hold a monthly meeting. So the requirements to be a chapter leader are to hold a meeting every month, but only nine a year. We don't hold them in July or August because everyone's on vacation. Your kids are out of school and we don't hold them in December because everybody has busy holiday seasons. And that's really time for family and all the other events you have to go to. Nobody needs another event on their calendar in December. So it's I'm into that. <laughs> So it's nine months a year. And, you know, we've raised kids, we've juggled, we made these rules because we know what it's like. That's the thing. And um, the meetings are usually on a weeknight, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. But after a couple of years, we took, did a survey and found out that a lot of moms of new babies, for example, or multiple kids found that their work days, the kids are covered, but in the evening, it was really hard to get out. So we now in the Arlington chapter offer three lunch meetings a year where we hold them at a local restaurant. And we always, like I said, have a speaker and there's a lot of fun networking time. And so the chapter leaders are responsible for come, you know, creating a, a mailing list and promoting it on their social media to get a group of women together, tapping into their networks, having the meetings once a month, and then just spreading the word. It grows by word of mouth and social media so fast. All of our chapters are growing very quickly, the new chapters. And um, then they start a private Facebook page for their members so they can all chat and connect with one another offline after meetings and stuff like that. And after the meetings, we always ask them to take photos at the meetings or have a friend or a volunteer or an assistant or you know some a member take photos, post them the next day on on social media and talk about your meeting and then put them up on the web, on your website. Cause they're all kind of designed like a little blog. They're welcome to offer their members, the accountability group program. You can do it yourself. And our facilitator will teach you how she's created it to be super simple to follow because the facilitator simply sits there and make sure that everyone's participating. But it's the women in the group that do all the work. That's the magic of an accountability group. We have groups that started three years ago and they still meet every month and meet for lunch once a month and hold each other accountable. Two and a half years after finishing our program. Oh, I love that. And they love it because it makes them keep accountable. It's like anything else. And they've all become really close friends, colleagues, partners, all kinds of stuff like that. I need to share, Karen, that I actually started a mastermind slash accountability group with five podcast guests. Oh, wow. Last November. And we meet we meet once a week actually on Tuesday evenings because a couple of them are still working full time jobs. And we have seen so much progress just in the last three months. I mean, one of them is giving a TED talk next week that wasn't even on his calendar when we started these. Wow. So that's so great, Kim. Yeah. So listeners, you know, male or female, if you don't have an awe in your area yet, and maybe it's just not your time to start one, I would just even look to see how you can start an accountability group with people that you know, because trust me, there are people who are looking for you to start that group because they want the accountability and the mastermind and the collaboration just like you do. So don't wait. I mean, if you just put a, a quick post up on your Facebook wall, on your profile today, I'm sure you would have interest of people right away. Yeah, that's true. Now, I will say that um, and that's amazing. And I do think that the power of a group to inspire one another and push each other forward is unlimited. I do, you know, they can probably Google and find out how to run one. You know, how do you do it? What's the format? And, and then you decide together with your group how often to meet how long the meetings are, are they in person or virtual, you know, what are the ground rules, all that kind of stuff. And it really is just an amazing experience. I have to second that, please. And I know you weren't saying go do it, but I'm saying go do it is look up how to run a group. 
because I have been in good groups. I have been in bad groups. And you don't want to be part of a bad group because it really is just wasting your time. Right. And I think, I mean, we we read a lot about it beforehand and we felt that a group of about four to six is the perfect size, that it's really hard to be as effective if you get much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I do have one last question. And again, I'm never trying to be confrontational on the podcast, but I do want to know your thoughts on MLM and network marketing and how they they fit into awe? That is such a great question. And I'm sure you understand how I'm trying not, I don't want to be confrontational about it, but I do personally see a difference between the type of businesses that you and I have, like with your PR business and a network marketing or an MLM. Uh, I'm going to share a story with you. You have such great timing. A woman in our group brought another friend to the meeting recent last week of, of the Arlington chapter of Awe, and she um, was a you know worked with an MLM group, and we had decided in um, in agreement with all of our new chapter leaders. They felt very strongly that they didn't want. They had had some bad experiences, and they didn't really think it fit our model. Our model is for founders of businesses, just like you were saying, like the difference between you and me and somebody who works for an MLM is that we founded our businesses and we are um, networking because we're looking to other people to find not just business and clients, but we may, we may be looking to hire someone to do a website or a graphic designer, or you hire a professional organizer or whatever it is, or, you know, people to, um, to, to provide services to you, you provide services to them. I think ML, people who work for MLMs, they, all of that is already taken care of. The parent company provides them with everything and they are only looking for customers or team members, as they call them, who are then going to sign up and be part of their group. Not one woman, I don't think, in my awe organization is looking to become a team member of an MLM. They're looking to connect with other women who are in the same boat that they are in, having built something from scratch. And I know that the um, women that are working in multi-level marketing don't get that and they don't agree about it. And there's, we've had a lot of discussions with people about it. I got a Facebook note just this week saying, I came to your meeting. You told me what your policy is. I really don't understand why pe- why there's this stigma. And I just feel like it's a mistake. It, you know, it brings me such joy. And all that is true. I, I, I'm sh- glad that she's getting joy out of it, but she didn't found that company. And I do just feel like it's a different thing. And I, it makes me feel sad that um, th- that the women feel left out. But on the other hand, we have made the decision to not include them in awe. I have to applaud. There are a couple women in my town who are driving the pink Mary Kay Cadillacs or whatever car they are. And I know that they took tremendous work to get there and effort and blood, sweat and tears and a lot of makeup. So I applaud them. Yeah, kudos to them for that. Absolutely. And I know there's other organizations out there that offer the same type of perks for when you hit those those levels. But I do agree with you. And I know that I could very well get backlash on it, but you are totally right. I've had to I've had to figure it out by myself or hire the people to help me figure it out. And and you're so right. right. I mean, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for addressing that. Well, it's yeah, it's an ongoing debate, but for us for right now, that's what we, that's what our decision is. So, um, and we, you know, we, I just was talking about it with a couple of women in another meeting earlier and we all agreed, you know, it's, it is different. And, you know, I have friends who are doing it and they're really enjoying it. It's not something that I would enjoy doing. And I mean, that doesn't mean anything though. Everybody's different, but I, but I do think that what the women are coming to our awe group are, for is not that. Now, one th- other thing I wanted to mention is in awe, only five women per industry can join any ta- chapter, but they can join other chapters. So we don't want a meeting where there, out of 30 women, there are eight realtors, for example, or eight marketing people. So limiting it to five each, you end up with maybe two or three at the most in any given industry at a meeting. So it makes the networking potential for everyone there much, much higher. Oh, that's great. I love that. That's outstanding too. Especially how you you are allowing the cross chapter collaboration as well. It's not to say that right. they can't if they're not one of those first five. It's not to say that they can't still serve. 
Absolutely. And they can also speak at other chapter meetings. We we don't allow members in our own chapter to be the speaker because, of course, the other people in that industry might feel that they were getting an advantage. But they're more than welcome to speak at all the other chapters, and we're, we're happy to promote them for that. Awesome. Karen, this has been a tremendous chat. I've loved every second of it. And I really do appreciate you giving your insight and and not minding my somewhat off questions. I loved your questions. I think they're really important to ask those questions because people are thinking them, right? So it's really important to ask the tough questions. And I also can't wait to have you on my show so that I can ask you all questions about yourself because I'm dying to hear more about your work too, Kim. Oh yeah, that is going to be a load of fun. I can't wait to come on. And we will of course promote that on all of our social media ahead of time and and um, you know when it's closer to the date. Amazing. I, I am looking so forward to it. Listeners, by the way, I have forgotten to mention that you will be able to find all the links, which Karen will share in just a moment. I've forgotten to ask that first, uh, at thekimsutton.com forward slash PP314. By the way, I, I was recording an episode yesterday and I just had to throw this out there because I know some listeners are probably wondering, PP, what? That is just so inappropriate. No, it's positive productivity. I'm sure some of you have figured that out by now. But with all my little kids, like the first thing that comes to my kids' minds is, Mom, you're saying a cuss word. Because in, in my house, that's what it is. I know that's so like out of topic of this <laughs> this chat, but that's just what happens sometimes. It just made me think of it when I was saying it. I was like, PP, 314. That is a riot. <laughs> They're like, why didn't you name it something else? I'm like, because that's what the name of my podcast is, Positive Productivity. So I And can, that's a lot of letters. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, I, I still have trouble spelling it. Yes. <laughs> Where can listeners find you? And I'd love if you would share URLs for both uh, and, f- if you don't mind, for your own personal site so that if they want to get in touch with you about your PR, that they can Oh, thank you, Kim. No, I totally appreciate that. So for all, our website is awesomewomen.org. And on social media, we're on Awesome Women Entrepreneurs on Facebook and LinkedIn. And on Twitter and Instagram, we're at Be Awesome Women. So um, my regular company's name is KB Concepts PR. And that's at kbconcepts.com. And I'm under Karen Bate on social media, as well as KB Concepts PR. And um, you can find me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook as well. Fabulous. And again, listeners, I just had to put it in there just so I could laugh about it again. But you can find the, all the links at thekimsutton.com forward slash PP314. I don't think it's going to be possible for me to say the URL in any future episode without getting a chuckle in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you again for having me, Kim. I've really enjoyed this. Oh, you are so welcome. Do you have a last piece of parting advice or a golden nugget that you can offer to listeners? Well, um, I think that uh, what our main message to women is that together we're stronger, together we all succeed more, and just to keep being awesome. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Positive Productivity Podcast. When I'm not podcasting, I'm supporting six to seven figure business coaches with their marketing automation and entrepreneurs like you through my coaching and mastermind programs. I want to invite you to visit thekimsutton.com to learn how I can help you take your business to the next level. 